Okay, so I'm just going to put this back for a second. I don't want to screw myself over. Mm -hmm. It's a whole night. It's a whole night all by yourself. And it's a whole night. Whole night by yourself. Whole night. Just don't look. Don't look. Don't look. A whole night by yourself. Oh, it's good. If you just ignore people, they'll ignore you. It's great. This is a nice spot. I'm surprised. Well, there's actually a little trail here, so I think somebody must use this. This is gorgeous. Oh, yeah, it's the fat one. That was the one that was stalking me. Okay. She got what I call the last look. So they just peeked out from behind the thing, and then she... She twirled around like 360 degrees, but I gotta be fair. She actually didn't gawk at me, so she's not she's not a bad fatty. She's a good she's one of the good fatties. I don't like all the fatties. <laughs> I decided if I'm gonna be cruel, I'm gonna be cruel to fat people. You know, and it, you, you don't deserve it. Some of you, you're so nice, and I'm a little fat myself, so I'm kind of a bit of a fatty. But um, there's this, these two women that I've met that look almost identical. One stalks me inside my building, and one stalks me in another area where I walk sometimes. And I'm just going to call it stalking. Like I don't, I don't like it. Okay, I don't like anything about it. I don't like how it feels. I don't like how they behave around me. But I understand they're people, and I just try to stay away from them. You know what I mean? But um, we don't always jive. All that kind of thing. Uh, but they're both fat, and they both seem like I think. They're these women that just let themselves go like they don't care. I don't really care how much you weigh. I just care that you care about yourself. Just like me. Like, you might look at me and say, man, you don't care enough about yourself. If that's true, then you wouldn't like being around me. Because you'd be like, dude, like, you just fucking look homeless and your hair is all messed up and look at you. You look like shit, right? And then you wouldn't want to listen to me, right? That would make sense. So I don't want to be around people who don't look to me like they're not taking care of themselves. That's... I don't want to be around all the people who do take care of themselves, but I definitely don't want to be in people who don't. So if I say fat people or ugly fat people, I mean like people I've known that are overweight, many of whom aren't too, but also just in the category of people that make my life uncomfortable. You know, they not only do they not take care of themselves, but they've let themselves go in a way that makes me sick, you know? I said to my mom, you know, I wouldn't miss not living in our building. I love it there. I love it. But it's just another occasion where I live near the beach. And the first time in five years, I just wanted to go at this one section of the beach that's a little close to where people are. And I waited an hour and a half for the tide to go out early in the morning, just peacefully smoking and talking and collecting stones. And one of these women called the bylaw officers on me. I know she did. I know she did. Because she has a grudge against me because of an encounter we had last year. I had to talk to her because she was talking to my mom every other day, stopping her. She had an older dog. She was basically had her hostage, and she was talking about feces the entire time, and I had enough of it. I didn't even use the word feces. I just said, you know, and then she was, you know, meddling around in our private lives and talking to the landlord about us and stuff, and I just said, I've had enough. We're private people. Please, that's enough. And I, I know I piss her off. But it's like, I had, for my mom's sake, for our health, I had to, like, this woman obviously has never learned appropriate boundaries. 
and go figure. I've cal calculated a, a clutch of female enemies in my building. Women, no doubt. Do you think I secretly want people to see me sitting here all cozy and proud of myself? Or do I secretly fear their approbation? Which, actually, I think I'm using that wrong, that word incorrectly. I've been using it incorrectly most of my life, I'm sorry. Oh, look, eagle. Bald eagle, beauty. See, the bald eagle is here to protect me. All these people going by. It's beautiful. This is like the Starbucks special right here. Man, I really love lifting that really big. That was the heaviest stone I think I've ever lifted. I was having trouble. I was like, my first concern is don't hurt yourself, right? You know, you, that's instinctual. You're like, you know, you know, don't, this isn't worth injuring yourself. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Like, what do you, but I also like to keep myself in shape. You know, I work with stones and I need to know how much I can lift. And I'm not stupid about it. I don't just lift it for the fuck of it. Like, it really was the best stone. I was right. It was the best stone for that position. And it kind of was a nice crown to the throne. A crown to my throne, really. With respect. And it's just a beautiful spot. I'm surprised there aren't little minnows or something in here. You know, those te people took like five fucking minutes to go by. No, they weren't looking at me or anything. I just, I noticed people are really slow. <laughs> fucking old people, man. They move so fuck. You ever been in the supermarket and you're just like, holy fuck. Since when was this so difficult? I've seen old people come into a store with really narrow entryway, it's COVID, and just stand there and just start going over their shopping list in their head or looking at the cheesies or whatever. And I fully get, by the way, I don't project anger onto them. I know they're just enjoying themselves and they should and they've earned it and that's what they're there for and that's what they're there to do. And I commend you for it. <laughs> I just, I don't have the balls to do that. I can't stand there. And you, you know, if I did it, somebody would kick me in the ass. You know, so I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm looking forward to getting old so I can stop in the middle of the aisle and I can drive at 10 miles per hour. I'm just like, you know, makes you appreciate the, the slower things in life. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm walking. Like, I'm trying to, like, get things and then go home. Women especially, they're not, they're shopping. They're mulling things over. Oh, there's a fish. Hey, is that fish? Oh, come on, be a fish. No, I think it's a shadow. But it's kind of cool, though.
Okay, let's go. Let's go like Nabisco, motherfucker. Let's go. Oh. Put up my back just a little bit, not too much. It's not that bad because it's not pinched, so I can work on muscles. Yeah, it'll be okay. It's an external source in a way, instead of it being like a, an imbalanced body. But we'll see. At the same time, outer shocks find uh, predispositions for injury. Okay? If you get an injury, you might have been predisposed to it. it finds weakness. So the this, this stone. Um, found my weakness, you know, in a way. Uh, um, someone, a kind of very weird woman, said to me once, and these new age women, they said, said, if you're angry, you're more likely to have accidents. And if you have accidents, it means you're angry. And they're always interested in, that's, that's their level of thinking. And I noticed I did have a few accidents around this person, and maybe I was angry. And it was interesting how I learned how they thought about anger, particularly their ability to express anger or how, whether they were conscious of it or not, the people of people they knew, and me, and what everyone was doing with their anger and what I was doing with mine, which is using words and then calming myself down when it's obvious you're dealing with someone for whom words isn't going to do it, right? Period. And then they just have their way with you. Okay. Anger or not, notwithstanding, an accident could be because you're distracted or you're angry or you're grief stricken or energy is attacking you or something about your life or the people and the way they think about you anywhere. Even shock. Like you can experience shock from like 20 years ago because of how people thought of you and behaved towards you, right? And it creates, it finds a predisposition. So there are days like our bodies and our lives give us knowledge and say, oh, you're a little more accident prone or you're a bit clumsy. Or if you say, oh, like there's evil around me or I have some shock and you're a little more careful. And if something does happen, then maybe you should be thankful, you know, that that's all that happened. Hi. 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 It's okay. It's okay. Hi. You, you can tell which one is the most vocal, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, a nice group of people, for sure. Yeah. yeah. See you guys. Hey. Hi. Okay. The dog was quite vocal. That one dog, the black one, we're looking at, that was the really intelligent one. She, I think, was like tilting her head at me and just like, hey, who are you? Like, she was looking at me. The, dog, the other dogs were just excited. She was, she was kind of like a, maybe a back of the pack or a middle of the pack dog, maybe back. And she's like, they look at things, you know? She's like, ah, oh, who are you? 
you know just looking a little more deeply at my aura right it's like oh, that was neat that was worth it so you gotta listen to that stuff you know healthy beings are curious yeah. but there's a right way and a wrong way to check people out you know the lady of course is long black hair dressed in black they generally have a heavy energy you know they're usually single she has three dogs for a reason it's okay you know it's like settling into the humdrum of singleness which for me is prob probably quite likely and you know you have your contentments your little luxuries and you're alone which means you just get to feel alone and while other people might feel sorry for you it's kind of like a beautiful ennui that goes back to the beginning of the universe when god said some of you will be alone because nobody loves you that much <laughs> and so you know your path in life it's your caste your guild your raison d'etre <laughs> the lonely wolf oh <laughs> so you do and you, you people that are alone a lot in life they know they they know who they are you know my mom is neat because she's had male partners and a family but she also loves to be alone so it's really interesting she's a much more interesting person than she realizes oh there's people coming let's go this way and uh, a much more interesting person she's a much more developed person than she realizes because she's never been around developed people you know and i don't think she gets that like your son can see you i know how smart you are you can, you can, I said, mom, you can move to Vancouver, make new friends and be around really classy people. You're worth that much. You don't have to just go to some place in Parksville because one of your old weird friends says it's cheap. And she kept saying how inexpensive it is. It's subsidized. It's inexpensive. That's the trap, mom. That's the trap, right? You're in the kill zone now. And I said, it's not just that it's cheap. It's that you're in a building with 400 other old women whose husbands have all conveniently died who have nothing to do but to spend their money and get old and fat right and gossip this is not an ideal living situation right you're around that the buzzing of these creepy old female minds like fucking little hamsters with in their cages nibbling on their little bits of lettuce <laughs> it's just like you know, molding away. Don't do this. You're like a stone's throw away from, you know, the happy ending club just down the road. It's like, fuck this shit, mom. You should be thinking about living in a rural area and I'll drive the car. And you got 25 good years left to you, mom. She's 76. I'm like, you got 25 years to go, mom. At least plan for that. You're not retiring. You need to find enough. We need to get out of this fucking town and find a nice rural place. The next step. Now, she's really good at finding places, so I guess she'll go wherever she goes. We will go wherever we go, but man alive. Have some smarts, lady. Listen to me. You don't want to keep living in an apartment building around old, creepy people. You, they, you are way smarter and healthier than they are. They will bring you down, right? We have been more sick in the last year in this apartment, my mom and I, than either of us have ever been in our entire lifetime, including about four cases of food poisoning. Because, and it's all happened in the last year since these, this, these women have come into our lives in the building who are pugnacious and sick and petrifying, you know? These people, when they're in your life, they weaken your life. You don't want to be around that. You don't want to have them around. My mom befriends all of them. And it's like, these people are blood-sucking losers. They don't add. They're so unhealthy. It doesn't matter how much money they have. You couldn't pay me to fucking want to spend time with them. They'll suck the fucking life back. They, they, they give new meaning to the word vampire. And my mom likes them. I, my mom just has lots of free, you know, friendly energy to give away. Yeah. And it's made her pray more than once in her life, and she still doesn't get it. You know, and I love the way she is, because I wish I was even a quarter as friendly as she is to other human beings. But, and I'm also a fairly passive, naive sort of person. But I could never be comfortable around some of the people my mom has socialized with. I always, that's the one, you know, downside is that I can't be friends with my mother's friends ever. Because they're always creeps and alcoholics and, you know, weird fucking romance. So, you know, she does look after the cavics one lady in the building and she's nice. You know, she's actually the one nice woman that we know at the entire building. Her name's uh, Thalwong. 
Yeah, she's actually a nice human being. I'm glad my mom knows her. You know, my mom goes up there to take care of the cat. I think, good thing for my mom. You know, good thing for the cat. Good thing for everyone. You know, it's good for the whole family. When you know people that are healthy, it's always good, right? You help them out. They help you out. Everything is positive. It's not one person leeching off of another. Leeching isn't just like, you know, being needy. Leeching is just, it's a whole orientation that different people can have towards each other if they really shouldn't be around each other. It's nature's way of saying, you, you two shouldn't interact. This one woman came in the building, and whenever she was around, she'd talk about her shit all the time. I would shit differently. My bowels changed their operations for two or three days. I was like, holy fuck, if I'm so much as in the elevator with this woman, I got two or three days that my bowels are going to be going off. Fuck me. Can you imagine if you had that problem? I live with this shit. Right? No wonder I get stressed out and anxious. I live with this shit. The first time this woman ever came up to me, she fucking sexually harassed me. I mean, and she's married. She's got big tits hanging out. Jesus Christ. I mean, this woman should be studied by Stanford researchers. And I, I know on some level, I'm sure she's had some sort of harrowing section of her development. So have we all. Have some fucking manners, you know? Jesus Christ. Anyway, she's a problem. And another woman in the building, and another woman, uh, both of whom are friends with my mom, are a problem. They're just a problem. And it's just, it's, you gotta think of it like just brass tacks. It's not personal, but it is. Like, they do not give me the right body language. They've been aggressive with me numerous times um they make me uncomfortable uh, bad body language fear aggression over familiarity they never make proper eye contact it's just like one woman took her eight months to just say hello to me and it wasn't even appropriate when she did my back was turned and i was on my patio later i find her staring through the curtains twice at me in the apartment it's, it's not good now i don't think she really realizes it i don't think she thinks much of it, you know, it's like, and that's unfortunate. And I try not to hold it against people, but it's like, you know, when we deal with people, we're sometimes dealing with more of them than they're aware of. So I deal with your whole mind. You're just dealing with the part of it you think you know about, you know? I just didn't have, just didn't have a father the way he thinks of himself. I had a father who had lots, of, who had a monster inside of him, you know? I had a mom who had a monster inside of her. And their monsters would attack each other. It was like monster wars. We'd be left crying in our bedrooms, you know? You don't want any child, yourself or any child, to have to undergo monster wars in their house. Monster wars. And in this corner, two bottles of wine versus your parents. <laughs> Who's going to win? Right? Julio, Ernest and Julio Gallo got the best years of our lives. You know? I like to go fucking urinate and defecate on their vineyard. Go kick his dead body in the balls. I fucking hate wine. I hate wine. I never drink wine. Ooh. No, just nasty shit. Just piss, right? All wine is piss. You'll watch people like, oh, this, that ear is piss. You know, it's like, it's all piss, man. It's all piss. It's high fucking fructose. It's fermented sugar, for Christ's sake. That's all it is. What the fuck do you think it is? It's from then, oh, I can taste the stream that ran into the Bordeaux Valley. <laughs> it's got good head and I like its clarity. I feel like I see everything so much better. Darla, you can't. <laughs> um, it's alcohol, fermented sugar, all that shit. It's fucking useless to the human brain. Fucking useless, completely fucking useless. They've sold the world on it, of course. Wine, wine, wine. They needed wine for human history. It's the only thing you have on the ship, in the trenches, in your fucking bedroom, in your car after you get gang raped. Alcohol is always there. The friend of every rape victim in the world. The friend of every child molester. Alcohol. Breaking up families since 1776. This white guy I knew from high school, complete racist. Now, we're all racist, but listen to this. He was talking about how the Inuit have alcohol problems. It's like, uh-huh. But the way they talk, it's like, okay, yeah, right? Alcohol is a problem. So if it's in your life, you're going to have a problem. It's like, oh, no, it's their problem. Their problem with alcohol. <laughs> like there was this special problem they have. 
look at them at their problem with alcohol. I said, alcohol is, alcoholism, as you may be referring to it, is the effect of all kinds of things. It's not necessarily the cause. It is also the cause, but it's also an effect. And he had no idea what I was saying. This guy was studying to be a doctor. You know, he, he couldn't perform basic logic. Right? His weird, uh, belligerent rhetoric um, made him friends online. No one seemed to care because no one was smart enough to even know whether what he was saying was sound or not. They were just into the personality of it all. You know? He would say that's where he was really coming from. And that's just the way he talks because of, you know, who he really is or something. It was creepy as fuck. For that person, they will never consider alcohol in itself dangerous or a drug. That's the way they learn to think in the Canadian education system. Right? They never teach you that alcohol is bad for anything. Isn't that amazing? The most freely available, most damaging drug in the history of the world. And they never teach us about it. Available in every street corner. Hey, teachers have it in their desk. It's basically like cold medicine, right? That's why people that drink a lot hardly have colds. It kills things inside of you, things that need to be killed. Then you rely on it. My mom used me to get out a lifetime of therapy she never had. She doesn't realize it though. She just thinks of it as a time in her life where she felt a certain way or things were going on. She doesn't know what the monster was up to when she was young, or what it did or how it felt or how scared I was every day. And I don't need her to know. I had to get that out of my system. So if you're watching my YouTube channel at the time, I was angry. I would say my mom's a sociopath. I would say, oh my God, I don't know what's gonna happen when I come home. I don't know who the fuck would wanna listen to that shit, but. You know, but also amazing if you do, I guess. And um, thank you for your sympathy. And uh, got it out of my system, you know. And so I use my YouTube channel to, yes, get things out of my system. And that's not really fair to the people listening, but I do. Because I had to. I had no other choice. When you put a camera in your hands, it's like writing a journal. It kind of makes it real. And you find out things by using your voice and by having a, an imaginary object or audience to hear your voice. It, you know, if you write something down and it's kind of a little more likely that someone's going to read your thoughts, your thoughts become more substantial. Right? You take a tense and you put your thoughts into a song or a poem or into words. You dare to feel or see or say or think all at the same time then something new is born. And you're not quite sure, but it is for you. It's dangerous, of course, if somebody sees it or hears it or takes it out of context maybe, right? So you have to be careful. You get to use your brain. School isn't about using your brain. So it's not about talking, right? You can't use your brain if you're not allowed to express your voice. But they don't think you have a voice until they give it to you, right? You're in school to get a voice, to earn a voice. But by the time you're 18, you've never even used it. Or your brain, for that matter. So what does that make school? Good? Or just what passes for good? And then you ask them for their good judgment. You hope that they think you're a good person. Right? How can you be a good person when you're judged by people like that? No one can be a good person just going to school and satisfying the gayest of teachers. Because they're all kind of deadbeats. They're old used car salesmen. You could buy your first car from them and also get an education. I wouldn't buy anything from a school teacher. Right? They're lost. They're lost to reality. They're perfectly civilized lost people. Right? They never think for themselves. It's all about rules and territory and money and real estate. Get living a good looking corpse one fucking minute at a time. Just to be near them makes me want to kill myself. I hope my corpse is just absolutely looks just gutted. Like it's floated through a dirty river for like 13 days, bloated, and just my jacket still falling off of me. My hand on my crotch, a sneer on my face when I saw the truth of it all. And it shocked me into the next world. <laughs> Fuck you, world. <laughs> you can see my finger just pointing up between my knuckles. 
Oh, I think this guy had a good death. <laughs> the bears ripped me to a few pieces. <laughs> Dogs have defecated in my mouth. <laughs> because they love me, of course. And animals are very picky where they take a shit, so I was honored first. <laughs> You know, dogs smell. They, they take a shit in a certain place, right? Because they're, they know, they're instinctual. Their bowels feel better when they avoid them in certain locations. Like, I've had dogs just suddenly take a shit around me because suddenly they feel comfortable enough to do so. It's an honor. I saw these things start to happen the more I walked, you know. Like animals doing things around you, seeing things. Oh, I think there's a woman down there. There's two. God, you know, there's, there's some men around today, but it's, like, it's a mostly female world out here on the West Coast. I tend to want to avoid them, so I think. Mm. Just a second. Let me see something. I might be able to avoid them. Let's see. People down there. Let's just go this way. I can do this. Avoiding white women, I say. You know, if I get bored, it is something to do. Just wait for a trail and then I'm going to head in. I also have to get far enough away from them and don't make eye contact. All women are cougars out here, essentially. All women are looking for something, you know? And that's good. It's good to be hungry. Wow. It's good to be hungry. It's good to be hungry. Okay, we're just far enough away. Pick your trail, Landon. Pick your entry point. Show these people what you're all about. <laughs> okay, well, um, I don't want to screw myself, so I'm waiting for something pleasant, actually. I don't, oh, I see where I am, okay. I can go up here and to the left then. I'm going to veer left once I go in. Okay. No one behind me. Here are ravens. Deer trails, plenty. What are you gonna do? People are gonna be coming soon. Yeah, but I don't want to hoop myself. Thanks, you know, you can encounter quite a dense amount of foliage. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and we're through. Give me a general heading here, my friend. Okay. Heading to the water. Hopefully there's no bears around. I've been wanting to make this route for a while. Good. Here we go. We are going to bear left, but I need to do this first. Okay. Listen to those ravens. You know, you're tired, you're hungry, you're stoned, you're lonely, you're angry, whatever, and now you're here. We found this trail, which I can take this way. So now I know where I am. Because I was down here the other day. I can take this away, by the time I come out, those women will be long gone. And that's what I mean, you know, getting to know an area. I just, I can only take being near women so many times in a day. And it starts to make me sick, so my blood will get putrid. A lot of women carry a lot of sicknesses in their blood. I don't think they realize that. Like, I'm not a, a women healer. You know, I'm not one of those men who can be around sick women all the time. Menstruating. When women go through menstruation, if women have psychotic issues, right, it's like, you know, they can develop very badly upon a man if a man is close to them. 
when they have someone, when I hear women criticize their mate, you know, and they say things like, oh, he's just this way. And I'm like, why did you have a child with him? You know, how can you talk that way about someone? Like, there, there's love missing. You can hear it. There's love missing in their voice. And, like, and then the guy dies. Or his testicles hurt for two years and then he gets ALS and dies. And nobody ever knows why and nobody wants to. And it's not one thing or another. It's just poor treatment in general from the world, us, the way we think, the ideas we worship, the mentalities we live out. So long. A world that my friend was always trying to change. And then he got consumed by it. So I thought at least learn something. One is that I'm lost to everything good and decent. No, I gotta go through here. Uh, we might be able to make our way through there. It's right on the edge. Let's try this instead. Choices, choices, let's try this. I don't know if I stick close to the water, I'm usually pretty good. That'd be a nice place to hold up for a little while here. How much is that? Oh, again. Wind. Oh. Is that a gate to buy? Got a good general heading. Meaning I'm pretty sure I'm heading in the right direction. Let's go this way. Oh, this is nice. But here, it must be noted have pounded down this forest for me long before I got here. Thank you to the deer. We have many lives and stories. Ooh, aren't they wonderful? Ah. Here we go, beautiful oh, Wow. <sighs> okay. I don't want to stop just yet. Okay, we're good. Release any fears. We've got some mushrooms. Nice. We're actually better off, the forest can tell since the last time I was here. I'm healthier, I'm safer in, in every way, so it's time to start planning my future. Oh, man. If I'm going to be this healthy. Find this trail here. You might find it a little uncanny how I find these trails out of seemingly thin air, but when you're here and you've got food on the ground, feet on the ground, I said foot and boot at the same time, it's a little easier. Your eyes hurt. You sort of get deer eyes. As long as you know. The general direction, see there's another one here. And uh, I'm gonna get hung up a little bit here for a second until we get through here. This this is the Futsi section and then we're gonna be okay. This is what the deer is doing. So this is what I do. There we go, I know uh so there. Pick up the trail here. Turn around for a second. I might come back here one day. Good. Okay. I wonder if they wonder where I went. No. They wouldn't. Oh! Yes, I need to sit down. Somewhere nice here. The trail's getting a little more defined. Might even have another bowel movement to it. This is quiet as a church in here. This is 
Ooh, my ears are ringing. This is beautiful. What? Dark, but beautiful. Okay, this is smooth trail. Yeah. Okay, very good. Go native. I don't. Look, it says K. Uh, special K. For men who are not okay. You're special and you're okay. Special K. Okay, let's not get too airy in here. That's, uh, that's interesting. I'm gonna, I can, got a few choices. Uh, I do. There's gonna be one more cool place to sit down. Yeah, you see that that's a hole that's a whole lot of hole if you were running starting to get a little arrogant boom hey you just broke both your legs so that's neat that's a little heads up for people jesus you know you're walking on the earth and it's not groomed for you. Anything can happen. That's why I keep a stick with me a lot of times. Oh, here's the trail. Oh, it just came out. That's cool. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Yeah, of course, I should have the line on. When you were outside. Boom. Oh, cool. That's, the, that's actually the trail I've been trying to find. So, there's a rock there. That's all we know for sure. And abandon the way. Okay. All right. Oh. It's been a long. I actually wouldn't mind turning around and going home soon. I've kind of had an impact here. Uh, okay. Do you know what's weird? All that walking in the dead. <laughs> Amazing. Like the whole little dimension that came out almost very close to where I started. Oh. That's actually exactly where I wanted to come out, so I just don't know how I managed to happen. Okay. Um, it's like, let me get this straight. You got what you wanted, but you don't know how. <laughs> well, I've been trying to learn that particular trail, where it is and where to find it, because I like, I want to enter that way more often. I think it's a really good spot because there is a sudden bend of the trail. It's a nice little entry point to disappear quickly. And then I try, you look at, look around you, I mean, oh, it's the place near the trees, you know, so if there's just a nice stone there, then I'm done. Might as well have an address on it, okay? So that's good. That'll confirm it's the trail. Now you've got something to anchor to. And the more you use the trails in the area, then you get a little more comfortable with them and start to feel familiar. Okay, I do need to sit down. I might actually have another crap in me too, which is amazing. It's just to show how comfortable my bowels are releasing. Okay, so um, yeah, we're good. We got some food, drink, marijuana. Camera's working. Good. We're all well. We're healthy. Okay. So I'm gonna have to pull over this side. Eh? Which way would you like to go? Do it, Jules. Okay. Well, there's here, you see. There's like no one around there. It's very scary. Oh, I don't have anything else to wipe my hands with. Uh, better to be away from people than from Okay, where are we at, Lana? There seems to be a dip. I'm not sure if I want to hit the dip. I don't want to be the dip, man. Stay away from the dip. Fucking dip is mine. <laughs> That's my dip, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah, they call me a dippity doo dah. No, there is a, there is a. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Look, mm -hmm. brave soul would go down here. Spirit, I mean. Well, we got something to wipe our ass with. Where there's holes, there's water, I've always said. <laughs> That's why I always put water up all my holes. Okay. I always water my holes. I always keep my holes nice and watered. You know what I mean, of course. Everyone knows what you mean. Isn't it? That feels wrong. Mm. Okay, I'm yeah. Let's see what we can do. I need to sequester myself for a moment. <laughs> Stay with my bag, will you? Ah, nice little weird crab. And I managed to urinate on myself, so everyone's happy. And I, and I didn't, how did you manage? Well, you know, there's a lot going on down there. <laughs> I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> like someone in a trailer park after a turn. I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> Time for the cleanup. <laughs> Where I live, you know, if you live in a trailer, you're usually an alcoholic sexual predator of some kind who has no standards. I'm sorry, but I've met some of their children when they come in the summer, and it's like, you know, they even their children kind of stink like alcohol. You can tell by their behavior that alcohol is already a big part of their lives. You know, and when alcohol is a big part of a child's life, well, it can go many different ways. Sort of like closing your eyes, taking a shotgun, and you could shoot for millions, you could shoot for a career, you could shoot for a, long, a short career as a crack hoe. You, know, you never know what's going to happen. It's like playing Harry Carey with your children. The future, their mental development, you know. They should put that in the ads. Play Harry Carey with your children's mental development by alcohol. You can tell like, that alcohol is a big part of a lot of these people's lives. It has been. Uh, I've lived on the islands, you know, all kinds of women. And you can see it's, they, they can't possibly hide, especially if they're around their family. And you see them or the way they talk about their family. I can talk to any woman. You can find out that alcohol has been a big part of her development. It's not hard, especially if you've grown up with it, right? It's, it's always like another person in the house. Because it is the gateway to all the other types of things people do and say in the house. You know? So mommy and daddy don't just learn to be responsible adults, they learn to be monsters. 
How did that happen? We don't know. Where's the science on it? We Sure, we lost that somewhere. <laughs> Along with evidence of the moon landing. Right? We never... No one ever investigates alcohol as people can make. People coming, so I'm just gonna go over here. Oh, it goes down here. Look at this. Wow, so the deer goes through here. Oh, they go down here. This is great if you have a sore back, by the way. Peachy. Oh. Let me go up here. Oh. Wow, I'll get into it. This is what I call walking in the woods. Oh. Okay. So being in the jungle, you don't want to get hurt back here. Oh, okay, now look. We found the crossing point. Ah. Yeah. A slight little crossing point here. This is where the deer cross. Ah, look at this. Now, I can take it easy. Ah, look at that dry land, baby. And now we've got choices. Then look at you can go down here across this log and there's a trail up there. See? It's good to see those things. Boom 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 boom. And we can a little easier probably going back that way, but if I didn't have a camera and crap and I wasn't tired, I might go that way. But uh, I'm gonna go this way. I've had enough heroics ready to stop. Yeah. The thing is, the deer, you know, they often have more than one route to an area, which is really nice. Oh. Mm. Right up here. Now, the river is this way. So, uh, oh, by the way, if you want to sit down and have a break, because this would be perfect. This is a nice area. Where do you want to sit? Got lots of choices. It could sit against this, which gives a lot of back support. Or you could find something maybe a little more out of the rain or the showers. Or either way, we've got total privacy here. So um, I want to keep going a little bit as long as it's easy. Famous last words. Um, I like these little unplanned excursions. If I know an area, look at these mushrooms. Eh? Beautiful family. And uh, so there's a trail through there. And it's probably another. I want to go this way. Learn to trust your feet. There's a nice big tree there. And we can go down this way. So I'm looking, looking, looking. All right. I like this. I don't know what it'll do, but look at the interesting crags. This remains untouched and unseen by most humans. 
Look at this stuff, man. We could do album covers for satanic music. It's... Okay, so there's a path that goes through here. So beautiful. Um, trails over there, and yeah, I can. Uh, I like this place to sit down down here. It's a nice little well, well of time, uh, maybe. Uh. A nice little well of time there, maybe. A nice little well of time, maybe. Don't even say it. Deer highways all over this place. Uh, uh, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. This is perfect. We got a nice clear view of the sky. You know, it's nice when you don't sit under the most beautiful trees because then you can see the most beautiful trees. You know, take the most raggedy place and then you can look at all this green around me. You know, and uh, rolling. If you were to do a survey of this, it'd be. So I gotta get some water in me, especially since I've eaten a lot of food and coffee and whatnot. So let's go for the H2O. Why don't we? Water is absolutely essential, as you all know. You know, and there's many times when I don't drink enough during the day for various reasons. But if I'm eating good, my appetite's up, and a day like today, for sure, it's not hard to be like half hour after eating some protein. Let's get a let's get a hundred liter milliliters of water. I'm not really hungry, but I'm gonna have a little peanut butter toast. Um, so I've had three craps today. The last one was what I would call a deer crap. Um, basically, like a little crap. You know? And when I'm walking on deer trails, that happens sometimes. It's like my body wants to crap where the deer crap. It's a way of connecting, leaving my own poop. My body's just doing that. If you just have a normal life, how do you know when to poop? If someone said to me, how do you know, you know, you're going to be able to support yourself when you get older? It's like, how do you know when to poop? I just do. I don't create these juxtapositions to be so black and bitter and um, confrontational and rhetorical. It just it gives me a chance to see my own life in perspective as much as I see my life as less than other lives. So if at the risk of seeming a bit bitter, I like to see my life not quite as less as I might. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, look at this. Thank you. Just saw a blink, like a twinkle of a fairy. Yep. I just saw it on the camera, too. The white fairies. Everything's okay. Yeah, I just saw it again. You know, I've said before on video that in the first couple microseconds you meet people, you can see a lot of things about them. Especially, you know, you don't know for sure how they're going to figure into the future. But if something, like something becomes violent, you could say that you kind of knew already. But with pronoia, we tend to really don't, we don't form those types of scripts in our mind. We, we actually 
like to give people more of a chance than they deserve. And we've learned actually, our minds have been dulled through education. So we don't actually, we might see things like I've slipped on stones and logs where I, I should have known I was going to slip. And my brain is looking and my feet are slipping and I'm watching myself fall and I'm just kind of paralyzed. Well, I, I've, done, I've done things, I've fallen in a river last winter and it's like I disobeyed every single thing I've ever taught myself. Like I was just like a five-year-old without a brain. And I, I can't explain that always. I would say evil and fatigue and negative energy, but it's like, I would say it's not happening for no reason. I'm still responsible for it, we're responsible for ourselves, but also things can push us sometimes at the same time. And how many suicide victims were sort of pushed from the ledge by something that was chasing them? Um, you can see Peter Lorre in like dark 1950s, 19, maybe 1930s film actually, um, being chased by a dark shadow, you know? What do you want, do you want with me? <laughs> um, and this is, you know, presaging a couple world wars, or at least the second world war. What's chasing us? What's, what shadows or motive, what ideas or gods or thoughts or words or language or voices above our own? And so if we don't cultivate our own voice, other thoughts, ideas, and mentalities is going to use that space in our minds. It doesn't matter how much of your brain or how much of your DNA is woken up or if you have 12 strands. What matters is how you work with, accommodate, uh, endure, or become infected with or possessed by the gods and thoughts, mentalities, and languages around you. The environment and its people and its mentalities is never inert. It wants stuff. It wants stuff from millions of people just like you. Just like by being a part of this society, I'm part of a mentality that wants stuff from other people. If I don't like how I've learned to be, and then I see how other people are, then I take on their mentality. And I might feel that their mentality is taking on me and is thwarting my goals for peace in life. But I try to limit my sense of the enemy. I try to put the onus on myself as much as possible, but I also know as an intellectual that there's more than just me going on in a lot of situations, and sometimes you, just, you, know, you don't have the control that you want. But here I am. Even though there's a, I think, a little rain off and on, I'm actually protected right here. Oh, high-pitched sound in my ears. That's the song of the blood. Enjoy it. It's the sound of this forest. I can tell when I close my eyes. It's not the sound, it's a sound of the forest. I need some friends. I wish I had a couple children hanging out doing this. Like, hey, daddy, we just see her all fucking days. I'm making a video, children. You're supposed to worship me as your lord and master so they can see that a man with my girth and intellectual size always has controls of his own flesh, control of his own flesh and blood. Control, father. Control is an illusion. Look, and he slaps me in the face. I can't even control myself. You didn't know I was going to do that. And you can't hit me back because that'd be child abuse. <laughs> Son, I'm going to tell you something that I always hated to hear. You're too smart. You know, children don't naturally hit their parents. It's like, it's pretty good they don't do that. They do a lot of other things. I'd be terrified of being a father. It must be terrifying. Terrifying. I mean, just terrifying. I mean, imagine having a child on the way. Just like, 
and like you wake up every day like with this awful feeling in your chest that's the sense of shame that you don't want to get a job <laughs> it's just like uh, you sure you want to get an abortion i've heard of oh there's a person there's a trail right there perfect there's a person with white hair so there's a trail right there that's where the trail is and there's I don't think they even knew I was here. Oh, thank you. This is actually my first joint of the day. Oh, there's more people coming. Oh, I thought that was a deer, actually. It was a human. They knew it was a deer. It's like a picture, you know? It's like a church. A painting sitting here looking at this. Wow, it's like a cathedral. Holy cow. It's like a painting. <laughs> of course it's a painting, Landon. It's nature's beauty. <laughs> it's always there for you. <laughs> like a mother. Like the father you never really had. Who took away the only mother you ever had? My dad is a, a moody psychopathic, you know? If he is just in a mood, he will attack me. Just in a mood. How do you predict a mood? And then, because it's a mood, when the mood goes away, it's like everything else is supposed to go away too. It's incredible the magical power of the universe of my dad's moods. <laughs> I get a moody sociopath for a dad. It's like, yay. The other day, my dad talked to my mom and said, does Landon need anything? And she should have said, yeah, father. I don't want my dad to be my father. He's been enough of a father for me. I want my dad to stop trying to be my father. To show me the money. been hard. Shit. I just capoted my cherry. I do that sometimes. They used to call me Cherry Capote when my imaginary friends would hang out with me. With me. Like, they'd be like, hey, Cherry. And I'd be like, hey, hey there, Joey. And Monica. Chandler. <laughs> Where's Ross? Oh, he's just masturbating in the bathroom to the Sears catalog. Wow. Isn't that what you do, Landon? Well, I used to. <laughs> I like the bra section. <laughs> 34D. <laughs> we go through the shoe section, the stupid swimsuit section, and then whew, there it is. Pornographical gold. Delivered every three to six months. <laughs> Spring and summer. <laughs> I just saw somebody else walking there. There's quite the little trail. That was the height of my sex life. And then one day I found my dad's porn under his carpet in his bedroom. I used to just sit in my parents' bedroom and I could see that the carpet was disturbed or something. It was like, it was disgusting, too. <laughs> I don't think it was a, a good experience at all. 
You should buy your own porn, man. But um, my first porn magazine was the December of whatever year. It was Anna Nicole Smith. You know, there's no penises in Playboy, but there there are vaginas, carefully airbrushed, like no vagina will ever look. So you're not really preparing to see a real vagina. And if you do see one, you'll be like, this isn't like the pictures. <laughs> You touch a girl, it's like, there's so much contour. <laughs> How did they get all the detail? They got you just right. <laughs> At the factory. I ordered you 13 and a half years ago. Let's get going. Because I'm seeing people walking around. I don't feel it's safe. Um, at least I know where the trail is. Okay, I think we're good. Here. let this joint smoke out. There's someone else there. It seems like the same person going back and forth. 